I had my medical done for worlds and I had this thing called left axis deviation where basically the left side of my heart was so enlarged that all the more of the sort of electric signals were going to the left side of my heart. It's almost like the right side starts shutting down a little. Was that from training and food? Yeah, just, just from being as big as I was, right. the stress I was putting my heart under. <laughs> So yeah, really great to meet you, Terry. We just wanted to have a chat and, you know, discuss what age do people normally stop the strongman? What do they compete to? Because we're talking about like insane levels of strength. Like what sort of age is it that they typically stop? I mean, I think a lot of it's down to the like time in the sport and the time under the bar. So we always used to sort of talk about it and think that most of the guys, you've pretty much got 10 years. Right. Depending on what age you start at. Like a Formula One driver's team. Yeah, it's kind of like if, some of the guys start at, you know, at a young age, they're starting at 18. They're done by the time they're early 30s. Right. Um, I know you've had Eddie on the podcast. I mean, he retired at, what, 31, I think? Yeah. Um, he started really coming good and getting into the big competitions when he was in his early 20s. So he probably had, had sort of 10 years of being like at a real sort of peak elite level. Yeah. And I think that's more the sort of deciding factor. He had odd exceptions to it. There's a guy like Mark Phoenix. Um, is he 57? And he's still competing now. It still goes to world's strongest man. Still holds his own. But he didn't start till he was thirty-eight. So he's still still an exception to the rule in terms of that ten years. But he's he's nineteen years. He's been doing it. So it's yeah. I think normally like ten years is is a normal amount of time. And then you get people that go a bit longer than that. But yeah. But we said this before. Right? You peak. You peak as a man. I I think mid thirty. Yeah. Just yeah. Really, I thought I would say your age. No. See, I I felt. I don't know if again because. So before I did strongman, I played rugby. So I had and I did judo before that. So I've I've put my body through quite a lot. Right. Um, so you know I started strongman at twenty five. So yeah, it's funny he doesn't know you just been doing strongman. Yeah, exactly. As you've been doing exactly. So I mean maybe you know maybe if I'd not been so active as a young age in terms of like real intense sport, then maybe now would be my prime. But I felt like sort of thirty two to thirty five was like the peak for me in terms right. of like my strength. Right, and what was the most you ever did on the? Because uh, I saw you do four hundred kilograms this week, right? Yep. On on the deadlift. Deadlift. What's the highest you've ever got? The most I've done is four fifty, which right. I mean by today's standards is sort of like you know when you hear about Eddie's five hundred and things like that. Yeah. You know it's all like four fifty is a long way off five hundred, but I think there's still only about ten guys that have done more than that. So wow. Yeah, I mean I think at the point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, at great. the point I did four fifty, I think there was about three guys that had ever gone over that. So it was um, it was pretty big at I was, the time. I was really happy to hear you're starting at Eddie Edna. Yeah. Like, I don't know why people like I in my I mean, I'm your age, right? And I and in my age in my mind it's just still a very young age. And I feel like I say this to Matt a lot, like I feel like I'm still getting stronger, yeah, getting fitter. Obviously I've not put myself through as much wear and tear, right? I've not taken it. But I still feel like as at our age as men is like the peak where you kind of get stronger, where your fibers strengthen up. Yeah, you're still training like you're twenty, you're twenty seven, twenty. Yeah, yeah, no different. I can train twice a day, but I do a lot of cardio and stuff, and I I love it. And yeah, I don't see any decline. Do you know what I mean, I mean, I think I think it's when it, I've always sort of found it's when like because I get a lot, I coach a lot of people and stuff like that, and they're coming into it in their late thirties and things like that. Maybe not into strongman, but started lifting and things like that. I think those sort of people tend to struggle more. Yeah than people that have always done it. Yeah. And I think that I see a lot of guys when they stop lifting, that's when they start to decline. Yeah. You know, like when you stop training, you accept and sit there and go, oh, even guys that play football and stuff like that, as soon as you stop playing, yeah. that's when you get old. Yeah. So I think that's, that's the problem. It's like, as soon, as soon as you stop doing it, that's when the age kicks in. All the time you keep doing it. It's such a good analogy. You know, I've had so many 80-year-olds, you know, they interview them at the end of their life and they say, like, what What would you change? And they say, don't stop. Yeah. yeah. Just don't stop. Just keep going. I think it's such a good analogy for life. A friend of mine I used to live with when I was in uh, Wembley when I first moved to London, he had to go to um, Africa because his dad passed away. And the last thing his dad said to him, he was like 19, you're still shoveling. He said, yep. he said you know, when you stop working is, is, when you, is when you die, basically. And yeah. it sounds really harsh because everyone thinks that you need to rest and stuff but if you know you stop working your brain oh i so. totally agree i mean everything about it, it's like and this is why strongman was so good for me and why i shifted into the bodybuilding because we're all sort of quite we all function better with goals and with focuses so it doesn't have to be sport related even but the minute you sort of take those goals away and you give up and go oh, i'm just old i'm just going to accept yeah, I'm going to sit on the sofa and watch football on the TV. Yeah, stop doing anything, stay in my job that I don't particularly like. Yeah, and just plod through life. That's when the age really kicks in, in my opinion. All the time you've got goals and focuses. Yeah, 
it's so much easier to stay young and active and you know you still want life you still want to do things still get excited by life yeah, exactly yeah. i don't know if you do this i've got a task thing on my phone and it's only ever it's a list of stuff like, like kind of short-term and long-term goals yeah. and it's only ever disappeared once and it messed me up yeah like i kept going on it so much like there's nothing there's no, i've got nothing to do yeah and it just, i just kept it just started ryan crazy yeah I'm, kind of you want it to disappear because you want to do the goals but yeah. at the same time you, you if you do it I, I'd, I'd often used to find that like before I stopped doing strongman, I used to worry and think like, what, what am I going to do? Like once I'm once I'm done with this, it's like, what then? What's next? But you do always, you can always find that next goal. Yeah. And I mean, for me, like sort of the way I tend to process things is sort of I'll sit there with a pen and paper and I'll write my what my absolute goal is. So like the big goal, and then I'll sort of break it down into sections of right to get to that goal. I've got to do this, this, and this, and this, and I sort of quite regularly will go through this process and then once i've sort of chipped off all these small goals and then i get that big goal it's then moving on to the next thing and yeah. for me like at the moment obviously all the focus on britain's strongest man and you know part of it was to deadlift 400 kilos before i competed because i knew that was something i needed to do and there was a few little things that i needed to uh, get my body weight back up a bit you know there's a few things that i needed to sort of address leading up to that big goal of competing at britain's but then the next goal is to get back on stage in october with the bodybuilding and look better than I did last year. So that'll be the main goal. And then underneath that will be, right, how do I, you know, how do I need, what do I need to do to look better? Yeah. You know, I need my legs to be a little bit bigger. I need to be a little bit, perhaps a little bit leaner than I was or, you know, and I'll break down this process and then I'll start chipping them off and go from there. It's amazing. I saw you in September, I think, last year doing the bodybuilding competition. Yeah, you looked amazing. No, it was good. I mean, I was pretty pleased, but, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people that, will never be satisfied with with something that I will always look for more. I can sort of, at an older age, there's one thing that has got better with age. I can sort of look at it and go, okay, like I can appreciate what I've achieved now, but I'm still always trying to look for more than what, what I got. Writing down those goals at the start, I, I did the same. I think people, when people say, oh, they're not a believer of, a, you know, New Year 2023, like everyone says, you have some, some people that write down these goals and stick to them and some people that don't. I'm a big believer. <laughs> you write them down. I wrote like, five or six goals career-wise, personal-wise, big, and then took a picture on my phone as well. So I got it in my diary and on my phone. And just that that first step of writing something down. Oh, yes. Yeah, changes, the, even from just thinking about it, it changes the process of like actually starting to get them done. The same as like going to the gym, yeah. right? Most important thing about going to the gym is actually just going to the gym. Yeah, I mean, I think, and, and even that with the whole like, you know, some people write down goals and other people go, that's unrealistic. You know, you're not going to be able to do that. And, and, Again, it's something that I've sort of come to learn as I've got older. It's like, okay, so say you write down a goal and it is a little bit unrealistic. Yeah. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to be able to achieve that. If you're working hard towards achieving that, you know, it's that whole saying, is it shoot for the moon and if you miss, you'll land among the stars. It's like you're still, yeah. even if you don't quite get there, you're still a lot further ahead. If you write 10 guys down, you might do seven. Yeah. If you already wrote five, you might do three. It's exactly yeah. that. I completely that. That's so. That's, so, that's such a... A human thing. I also kind of, it's a little bit, um, I kind of c compare it to, I've been listening to a lot of male and female sort of people online and, and talking about things. And it, it seems to cross over in both genres. You see, you see sort of males and females doing those things. And it's like, God, I've, I've been going down a lot of rabbit holes with, with the whole male female debates at the moment recently. I was having far too much time watching podcasts and things like that. <laughs> it's crazy. We were saying this now, like, I, I'm becoming, you know, I'm, I'm listening to podcasts going to sleep just kind of wanting to be inspired or wanting to be moved. Yeah. And quite often on the podcast is saying, look, if it's the same what we just said about going to the gym. Even if you're just listening to this, yeah. you're doing something and you kind of go a bit crazy down the rabbit hole because everyone's got an opinion now. And, yeah. You know, there's a, there's, everything's like, you can't say this, you can't say that. It's very PC. I, what, where do you, uh, just on that, where do you think it's, where do you think that world's going? Do you think it's going to get worse? Do you think everyone's going to go crazy? Do you think like, I, I think we're in a really difficult time at the moment. And um, um it's a really touchy subject, isn't it? I so like I I feel like, you know, obviously I'm going to be a little bit selfish and think of it from a man's point of view. I think it's a very difficult time for men at the moment in terms of, you know, knowing what our, our identity is. Yeah. I mean, I think for me as a 43 year old man, it's kind of a bit easier because I am who I am. I'm molded. This is me. You know, like this is how I'm going to be. I can make slight changes and sl slight tweaks, but essentially, like I'm fully formed. But I think for a young man, it's kind of, it's very difficult for him because, you know, the, be in touch with your feminine side, do this, don't do that as a man, it's toxic. And I think 
you're getting so many people and then you've got this other side of the spectrum that's so extreme to be a man you've got to do this this and this and it is a quite confusing time because you've got two completely conflicting ideas on what a man should be where in the past there wasn't those pressures we could just be who we wanted to be and just get on with it and yeah live our lives and you know as long as you're not hurting anyone it don't really matter but i think at the moment it's quite a difficult time for young it's just scary isn't it, for the next generation because yeah. they got they got all this like they've, they've been told this and they've seen so many different things to us right um like just being open-minded i think we can sell this stuff now it's just it's only youtube right but I, and spotify but i feel like it's kind of to me it seems so obvious like it doesn't seem like a discussion right that like i don't know if we should get into it but what you were saying you know they're saying now that the latest calvin klein advert is like a man being pregnant right and to me, it's very obvious that that shouldn't happen. Yeah. And so, and a lot of this stuff is, a lot of this, like the the, the woke culture, right? Mm -hmm. To me, it sounds like, I mean, I'm very unpolitical, right? So I'm really, it's my, my worst subject. But I heard this sub thing the other day saying, if you go woke, you go broke. So the more you, what is woke? What's the actual definition of that? Woke is like um, going along, I don't know if it actually stands for something. Do you know? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. don't know if the, if there's an acronym, or awakening or something. Is it? Is that, it must be a, a, a part, it must be, be part of awakening but it's basically like to define it is woke people would def or woke culture would to be, be defined as like really forward thinking mm -hmm. right okay so but but it what my question always is is who's putting these thoughts out there because yeah. all the woke if you say the woke crowd they didn't come up with all of these ideas they're all being pushed down from big corporate companies mm -hmm. like you know and um you know it comes from diversity having a certain number of people in the workplace having a certain number of equal women in the workplace as men and my thought has always been Whoever's best for the job should get the job. Yeah. Doesn't matter what colour, what sex, it should be the, you know, and that's how things should work and that's how we've grown up yeah. having things work. But they're trying to change things. And this really there's a there's a podcast called Trigonometry. And the the main guy from there two weeks ago, he gave a talk at Oxford Union, you know, at Oxford University and yeah. he gave like a thirty minute talk on woke culture and he said, Look, the biggest thing in woke culture at the moment is this climate thing, right? That that's wigging up giving off CO two too much as humans you're giving off too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And he said, look, the UK is 2% of all global carbon emissions. And the, the the main people that give up carbon emissions are extremely poor countries. Yeah. And he said, look, let me ask you this. If you're in a very poor country, he just had a son, right? He said, if you are, he was living in a poor country and his son could blow out a huge amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, but he could go to school. I'm telling you, you would put your son through school by letting off a load of CO2 in the atmosphere. So it's not something we're going to fix. Yeah. But if you go onto Twitter and if you look at the Twitter files and all these other uh, social media companies, they've actually propagated very pro by, by polarizing things. They really propagated the, the BLM thing. They yeah. really propagated a lot of the COVID stuff. They really pushed forward, which causes massive polarization between people and arguing. But when it comes back to people like us that have grown up, I've had a pretty normal upbringing. Yeah. I look at it, I'm like, I straight away can see through it. Yeah. And just think this is mad, but I just feel really sorry for the young kids, especially in your yeah. universities. Like I wouldn't, I'd really think twice about putting my kids now through university yeah. and getting led through this very specific way of thinking. And, you know, I won't say too much, but like I've got a lot of younger cousins mm. and I don't upset them because I upset them once a few weeks ago, but they've really gone down that line of thinking. Yeah. And, and, and I can't have the conversation with them. Because they wouldn't, they are not open. Yeah. I, I, I think a smart person, my granddad always used to say to me, a smart person would be like, I'm open to this way of thinking and I'm open to being wrong yeah. and changing my mind. I'll say I'm wrong if I think a, a guy should be able to be pregnant, yeah. if someone can convince me, but no one has convinced me otherwise of these things. That's what I like about what you just said about your your you know, your age and your mentality is, you know, I've got a stepdad who's slightly older than you, but he's you know completely gone, closed off. You know, how many watch this? But you know, he's got his own ways, and that's it. Yeah. You, you, you said yourself, you've got your own ways. Yeah. And still, you're still watching. You're still interested. Yeah. You're still open to like what you just said. If someone says something that's really meaningful and makes sense, yeah. I'll take that in, absorb it, and use it. I think, I think you know, there's this. You, you're allowed to change your opinions on stuff. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but. I mean, I, I'm sort of very much of the sort of thinking with the whole transgender thing. And for me, like, I find it a little bit confusing in terms of, like, because th there's no, like, absolute, like, I'm 100% masculine, I'm 100% feminine. Yeah. You know, there's no, you know, what would typically be seen as feminine traits and what would typically be seen as masculine traits. No one is 100% of, like, either yeah. of those things. Uh, yeah. We're all somewhere in the middle. And, you know, the whole, like... I mean, I suppose the cross-dressing transgender thing's a little bit different in terms of like they actually feel like they're the opposite sex. But the whole cross-dressing thing, it's like, it's been normal for years. Yeah, like, yeah. 
you know, and, and if a guy wants to walk around in what's typically feminine clothing, that's fine, you know. Yeah. Doesn't need to be any more than that. Yeah. You, you can wear what you want, do what you want, be what you want. Yeah. A bit. But for me, like there there is there is two genders. Yeah. Yeah. The female. Yeah. And and you know, that's you can be a slight exception to that in terms of like you're born a male, but you think that you're you should be a female. Yeah. I do believe that there are people out there like that, but yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. You're an individual. You can be that. Yeah. So, you know, it's how biological differences. There yeah. are a hundred from different yeah. things like that. But, yeah. Uh, no, I, yeah, I completely agree. But it's, it's sort of like where it goes down this sort of, sorry, but in there, it, where it becomes this issue is like, we're told that we have to be this way and we have to believe that. Yeah. No one has to believe anything. And yeah. we always have a choice in everything we do. Yeah. You know, it's always like, we all have a choice in everything that we do in life. There might be consequences to that choice, but we always have a choice. Yeah, and what's really interesting, like Jordan Peterson, right? He's he's been really outspoken about this yeah. gender thing, and he said, "Look, look at all the transgender clinics, and they they all opened up, right? And um, they that because the kids are well, open specific. There, there's been a lot of clinics where you can have your sex changed, right? Okay, research this. Don't take my word for it, but <laughs> a lot of them opened up, and a lot of kids because could went and had sex changes. Now the it, there was a massive increase." In the amount of kids that had their gender reassigned, right? And that is because everything is put in the media. So I completely blame yeah. the media, the corporate companies. If you look at the, a lot of them have shut down. A lot of the uh, the uh, clinics have shut down. And I think something like 30 or 40% of them have got lawsuits against them from the kids and their parents to say, you wrongly reassigned our kids' gender. So you just- Why is that then? What, what, what? They, they, because they now regret it or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? There's a tattoos. I mean, I can't speak for them. Yeah. So research this, but that's- on a line that's fairly accurate everything there so you can see it's kind of just makes sense it's like why would you be put through this and it's like you say it's just like, it's like for us i'm really glad that like someone like you you know to me you're like because we always talk about like the difference in we get feminine from our moms mm -hmm. we get masculine from our dads and you're like a like what would be classed as a typically masculine role model right yeah but, right because you're strong and that's what in my opinion is is needed yeah to see people like that to see people like it, i mean that's the crazy thing but i mean i like He'd tell you, like, look, as, as masculine, Fine. yeah, as masculine <laughs> as I can be in some ways, and as masculine as I am, you know, I still have the odd feminine trait. I'm sometimes quite sensitive, and I'm yeah. quite, you know, empathetic, empathetic, which would, you know, some people perhaps wouldn't expect from someone like me. So, like, that's what I mean. There's no, there's no black and white. It's, yeah. We're all, we're yeah. all levels of grey, and it's, yeah. but just be who you are is fine. That's what I mentioned. We yeah. do, we we cross over. Yeah. When are we taking this break to change into our dresses? Then are we going <laughs> to? <Yeah. laughs> I, I might struggle to get some size 17 it's, high hips. This is where Terry just goes, whoops. A, 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 little, bit, a little bit of a weird one. My, my mum will kill me for saying this. So my, my mum's got size 11 feet. Wow. So, so, so she buys her shoes from a, trend, a transvestite website. Yeah, so she buys all her shoes from a website that sells women's shoes in men's sizes. Oh, she hate me for saying that. I just find it funny. Yeah, I've got like people sort of joke about it. I've got size 17 feet, and it's like there's no chance I'm ever getting any high heel feet. A size 17? Yeah. That's insane. Oh, yeah, that feet. Yeah. Mate, that's insane. I mean, yeah. how tall are you, Terry? Like 6'5. That's incredible. I mean, you, you hear like, I'm a 12, you hear people that get to 14, 15, and that's really insane yeah it's, it's a bit frustrating but that's crazy how do you how do you shop I, I, like do you have to go it's all to online right yeah i've got like a massive um obsession with buying shoes and trainers now because when i was younger i couldn't get them yeah. now it's so easy yeah Just go online there's all websites that sell different sizes it's yeah it's so easy so yeah i have quite a I've got like over a hundred pairs of trainers. Of yeah. Where, where did you up, Terry? Which area? I'm trying to get from, from, from Darford originally. Okay. So Darford in Kent. Um, yeah. But you know, most people would like because where Darford is is like right by Essex. It's sort of like Essex, London, and Kent border. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit of it's a bit muddled. Yeah, yeah. I can hear. Yeah, it makes me sound at home when I hear an Yeah, some checks it. Yeah. And where did like I I kind of sometimes think. I mean, I know a lot of people will say you know. Everything is rooted to your childhood on on who you become and everything. I know. I want to say I kind of half believe in it and I kind of half don't because I have my own experiences. But where did did something f through your childhood kind of bring you to the man you are today? And and that applies to like your strength and the the fact that you just touched on. You know, you're very un yeah covered all yourself being masculine, but also having some yeah. I mean, I think so. I was always like super competitive as a as a kid. I love it when people say that because I'm this. I was the same. Unbelievably competitive. Like, such a good thing um, as well for a child. I had, was very fortunate that my 
my parents facilitated that. Right. Well, like encouraged you and, and kind of said, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it was like, yeah. so I started doing judo when I was seven. Yeah. And very quickly, my dad was taking me to, driving to Stratford, um, driving up to Sig Cup, driving up to Orpington. I'm like traveling to all these different clubs to go and train, to train against better people. And, you know, I remember being sort of like eight, nine years old. And it was a bit of a weird one, really, because at the time I kind of resented my dad for a little bit because I felt like he was sort of pushing me. But now I sort of look at it differently in terms of like, I know that if I hadn't done it, he, he knew he was doing it for my best interest because of how competitive I was. I was training like six times a week when I was like nine years old, doing judo like and traveling because my club was only on a Monday and a Wednesday. So I'd go to the Monday and the Wednesday there and then I'd go to that club on a Tuesday and that on a Thursday and that one on a Saturday. And it was... Just always like that. And I think for me, that sort of absolute like work, you know, like I'm going to train to be the best I am. I'm a bit OCD as well about stuff. So when I like commit to something, I am like 100% in it w with anything I do in life. So you know what I was saying about going down the, the rabbit holes about like the whole male and female thing. I would sit there for like hours and days just researching stuff. It was when we were locked down during COVID and I like started researching American politics. It doesn't really have much relevance to me, but I would literally spend like days just reading stuff. It was an interesting time for America. Yeah, yeah, it was. But I, because I, I get the great is if you yeah. know where to put that. In, especially I think when that's exactly it. If you've got a channel for that, if you're a bit like that, um, and I think most top sports people, you sort of in any sport, they they were all a bit like that. I mean, we talked a little bit before we started. Like we, I know you've had Eddie on the podcast, and he's like it, where it's like he, you just take things to a whole different level of extreme and. I'm just lucky that I found some outlets that enabled me to do that. And um, I mean, I was naturally like that as a child anyway. Like my mum and dad said I was like crazy. Like I had to be doing stuff all the time. And my son's like it as well. Like you can't be sitting there quietly doing nothing. But I was very much like that as a, as a kid. I like literally did everything to extremes. And he was encouraged. But because of that, now to me, it's just normal. You know, like, yeah. So was encouraged by your mum as well? Yeah, more my dad than my mum. But um, I think, like I said, I mean, I, I almost resented my my dad for it a little bit when I was younger because I felt like he was sort of making me do more than I wanted to. But I look back at it now and think, if I'd not had that, because I look at my son sometimes and see how he behaves when he doesn't have that sort of outlet, he's, he's a bit of a nightmare, he's a bit of a handful. So if you constantly give him things that, that are an outlet, the same as I had, he's fine. And I think that if I hadn't had those sort of him pushing me like he did, I probably wouldn't have been in the place that I am now. And it probably would have been a very different child because I wouldn't have been stimulated. I, I needed that constant outlet and that that ability to push something to an extreme that you know, most people would probably say is unhealthy. Yeah. But for me, it was what I needed. I think that's what you, I think that's so good though, because, and I think that's the, that's the power of having two parents, um, because, you know, you were just talking about the dif differences between males and females, yeah. the actual DNA and chromosomes and all that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, if, if, if the male can, the male can typically drive that competitive, yeah. pushing you to do sports and, and that kind of nature, you'll pick up attributes from your mum. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know, stupid, but learning to cry or being yeah. sensitive or, or, or learning to do other tasks. And, yeah. things. and I think, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting, and I've picked up I've picked up quite a bit of OCD from from my mum, so I can I can definitely yeah, add to that. and yeah. that just carried through to it. Like yeah, I mean I, exactly that. I mean I'm very lucky that my parents are you know still together and happy now. So oh wow, man. yeah, I had a real good sort of upbringing in that in terms of that. And like I said, my dad encouraged me to be competitive. I was already competitive, and he encouraged me to be more competitive. And I think that obviously I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have achieved the things I did without that. You know, I, I got a bronze medal at the British Championships in judo. Wow. I, How old were you then? I was so well, I would have been 11 or 12 at the time. I played for a professional rugby club. I spent two years playing at Harlequins. And oh, wow. I played in New Zealand for two years. And then I came back and then I got to World's Strongest Man. And it was sort of, I wouldn't have achieved the things I have without that childhood that I had. So it was, you know, it was teaching me to be the man that I am now. And, and I like who I am. So it's kind of... um it's done me a lot of favours. That's amazing, but it's, that's a male influence from your dad. That's hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. That's one left to hear as well. Well, it's he's, great here. I, I, I mean, my daddy worked hard. You know, 
my parents didn't have loads of money, but me and my sister never went without. Right. You know, like, and, you know, they, they both my parents worked really hard to give us what we needed. Yeah, and, um, a nice out. yeah, and like I said, you know, for me, what I needed was someone to encourage my personality traits and, yeah. you know, push me to be who I, you know, was meant to be. Yeah. And, and I was lucky that I had that. So you did the rugby and you're still living in, in uh, Dart, Dartford at this time? Yep, at that point. And then I moved to New Zealand. Um, my rugby. So, yeah, for, to go and play rugby. So my, my contract came to an end at Harley Quinns and I was kind of like, what do I do? I, I was in a bit of a weird, yeah, it was in, it was in a bit of a weird place because I sort of felt a bit lost. I was only like 21 at the time. So yeah. it's kind of like, what do I do now? You know, because it's sort of like I'm still at the beginning of my rugby career, but I've just been binned by like a top club you know that i'm not good enough for, for them to play for them so i need to go away and get bow or find another angle that i can attack this from so yeah. for what better way to learn than go and play in new zealand for a couple of years right yeah it was the best thing i ever did great times really yeah so 2005 you were 25 you back from new zealand yep uh, did some weights and found out you was yeah, twin so, yeah. Extending sort of. yeah did my first strongman composition won it um like and i didn't know what i was doing i had um Obviously, some gym experience, but not the event stuff. Apart from what I'd seen on TV, I didn't really have a clue. But, yeah. you know, it sort of went away from me. I was like, well, I'm pretty good at this. Did another competition two weeks later, and I tried to enter another novice comp, and they were like, well, no, you've won one, so you've got to move up. So I did, like, South Coast Strongest Man, and um, I was against all the best guys in the south of England. Like, I'm fourth, and I was like, okay, so I'm coming fourth, and I don't even know what I'm doing, and I've been doing this for five minutes. So, yeah. I've obviously got either like a, a bit of a gift for it. And what sort of weights were you lifting at that South Coast? Conference? I think we had like um, a one, like a... 120 kilo overhead press and on the farmer's walks, we had 140 kilos in each hand and right to do like as much distance as we could. Right. And um, yeah, and then sort of literally like, I think it was seven seven months later, seven months later, I went to World's Strongest Man for the first time. Wow. So at that competition, I, yeah, I actually hooked up with my training partner who we trained together for years. Um, we started, yeah, and he, he, he was quite experienced. So he sort of was helping me a lot with learning the events. I was always strong, but I didn't know what I was doing in terms of like the event stuff. But once I sort of got to grips with it all, then it all sort of happened so quickly. And I remember this sort of moment of being out in China, standing on the starting line and they're coming along with a camera and I'm like, I had this sort of moment of realisation. I'm about to do my first event of World's Strongest Man. I'm like, I've watched this on TV for years and I'm now going to be one of those people that, you know, people are sitting there watching. And it was, it was such, such a bizarre moment. I'm like, oh my God. Like, and it, it sort of hit me as I'm about to do my first event. Yeah. And um, yeah, it all just went from there, really. It was, um, you feel it, was it a good feeling? Or was yeah, it was great. I mean, the, the, the good thing for me, because I think because I've come from rugby and like all of my heroes were like rugby players. So when I say heroes, like people I looked up to and thought, well, I want to be like that one day, they were all rugby players. So for me to then go to World's Strongest Man, none of these guys were like, not that I didn't respect them or anything, it was just, they're just guys I'm competing against. I've not put any of them on a pedestal. So for me, it was quite easy to sort of go into that and not feel overwhelmed by the situation because I'm not looking at these guys going, oh my God, there's Marius Puchanowski, oh my God, there's Yanni Vernon, like their ex-World's Strongest Man winners. I'm not like seeing there going, oh, like, you know, these guys are unbelievable. I'm just like, well, I'm just, oh, I'm a new guy, but I'm here to try and beat them. And I didn't sort of have them on that pedestal. So it made it very easy for me to just sort of transition into that, being at that level from where I was. How much of it was you naturally strong versus like the dedication and time you put into it? Well, I, I always think it's to say, you know, they're just naturally yeah. strong than ever. It was probably a bit of both. I mean, I know the first time I ever deadlifted, I deadlifted 260 kilos. So, I think most men, if you took them off the street, having not deadlift, I'd say they probably do 140, maybe. No, having not lifted, they wouldn't do 140. Nah, no, I don't think so. No, no, maybe that more. guy last night, there's a guy in the gym, big old lump, isn't it? He used to, he used to 160. He's a big guy. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 like, having never deadlifted before, I did 260. So, I literally, that man, that's the first time I did it. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I don't know that anyone I've spoken to has been like even anywhere close to that. Yeah, so, yeah, so are you this sort of size then, or is it, are you, you must have been, a, are you just a big lad? Yeah, so when I played rugby, like especially when I was at, at Queen's, because I was obviously, obviously quite fit then, so yeah. like that was, so my body fat wasn't too high. I was probably maybe 125 kilos, so I'm about 
maybe, maybe one thirty even. So I'm about 30, 30, 35 kilos above that. I did see a good transition picture. Yeah, I mean, because it was one that you were quite. Oh yeah, well, there was there was none. <laughs> I'm on Jesus. Yeah, no, I don't mind. Your thing, and then the next picture was that. Yeah, I've got and two so, picture with. So it was when, so that was 2014. I did World's Strongest Man, and. It was a bit of a weird time. We spoke a little bit about it earlier. So I was kind of at this point where I'm like, what, what am I doing with myself? One of one of the guys who I was competing with, you know, I considered a friend that just passed away, some some health issues, and I was like, sort of having this moment of like, what am I doing with my life? Like, this is not good. And um, so I decided that was going to be my last competition, 2014. And um, so I did well, strongest man, come fifth, beat Eddie. This time, <laughs> last time I ever beat him. Um, <laughs> no, he went on to amazing things. But no, it was sort of like, yeah, the, the last time I actually managed to beat him. But um, so I did that. Come fifth, he was sixth, um, but very close to me. So I was like, it was time for me to step away because he was getting very close. But it was um, then went on, and I was like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, and I was I was on this real sort of downer about strong man. I was like, you know, what am I doing with my life? I'm making myself unhealthy. One of my friends has just passed away and, and it all sort of just got too much for me. And then I wanted to start a family at the time. I was with my now ex-wife um, and she wanted wanted children at the time. So I was like, okay, so we sort of went through that process and I had a few problems there because of the, the state that my health was in. So I had to take some time off. You know, she ended up pregnant. We had my son, which was amazing. But at that point, I, I basically carried on eating like a strong man, but not training. So I was, I was 175 or 180 kilos at World's Strongest Man. And then I did pretty much a year and a half of eating like a strong man, but not training at all. And I mean, doing nothing. Right. So the picture you're talking about, I was think I did a charity rugby match and I was 203 kilos at the time. So just, I think it's just a touch under 32 stone, like literally like a pound or two under. Yeah, and I was absolutely huge and out of shape and everything else. It was awful. And we've said this, I've said this before, I hope you don't mind me saying it. It's like, you know, even this idea of strong money, and it's it, I, unbelievable what you guys have achieved. It's incredible, you know, but it, 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 it can't be healthy in a weird way. I mean, you just mentioned having children. Yeah. You know, you had to. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to stop it. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind talking about it. Obviously, we talked about masking and all that earlier. You know, like, I think part of that is being open and everything, but. At that point in my life, like my sperm count was like completely gone, you know, because of because of all the health issues and sort of some of the things I was doing with my lifestyle. Like we we started trying for babies and it just just testosterone down as well. My testosterone was fine, but my sperm count was absolutely zero. And like, did you figure out? Did you find out why was that related directly to training or diet or both? Or, or a bit of both you know? and a few other things which we probably shouldn't touch on right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, there there was a few things that were were causing that issue, and um, I knew I needed to sort of step away from the sport for a while to to um, get that right. And yeah, I mean, I was very lucky that a few months down the line, everything was all good, and I've now got a, the most amazing son in the world. So. That's but, amazing. Um, yeah. Did you did you did you fall out of love with it, or did you go? Did you fall out of love with it a bit, or did you go? No, I want to make I want to make these decisions to have a son and to you know, like you said, make your friend your friend passed away. Yeah, it was you know, you need time to actually mourn those things. And yes, those things. People don't, and people don't realize how long you actually need. It was a combination of all of it. One, I felt really unhealthy. Obviously, then you know we were trying for babies and that wasn't happening, and that was due to the strong man. And then also, yeah, like I said, my, my friend passing away, I sort of just I just sort of started getting really disillusioned with it. All. I was like, why am I doing this? You know, like what so I can stand on TV and go look at a strong man. Yeah. And and it sort of I went through this weird sort of mentality. And plus, I think for strong man for me at that point had become less about the fun and more about just doing my best to win. And it become like a job. It was just like I didn't enjoy it as much. Nice but yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So none of the none of it was fun anymore, yeah. and um, I had to sort of step away to then fall back in love with it again. It's 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 so um, I'm I'm fascinated with that, and I, I you know I had, I had a conversation with Tyson Fury about this actually, and, and it's so weird, and it you know again lots of different areas of sport and people, but you could I could kind of relate to it in a, in a in a in an interesting way. I mean, it's it's that thing where you go right, do I step away from something, mm. and build something else where you have children or you take time to fix your health or whatever, or do I keep pushing and pushing and pushing career goals and whatever that, that may 
be good at, at a certain point in your life, but then become sort of yeah. detrimental to you later on. And you've got to know when to do that. It's yeah, it's hard to like weigh that up. Yeah, I, I was Bruce at the same time. I hit high, had to come away yeah. from it to realize what what actually mattered and what. For. Yeah, I mean, and I do think that you know, I mean, he's a prime example of having good balance in life now. He's got a family. Yeah, but he's also obviously achieving amazing things in his life. Is sort of so he's obviously found a good place where he's got that balance of both. And and I think I know like having chatted with Eddie, obviously we keep talking about him. He's been on the podcast. I know he was very like focused. Yeah, and he's got great balance. Then. He's got a great balance now. It's perfect. And I, and I'm the same. I've, I've sort of got that point in life where. I mean, and maybe it's probably because I've stopped with a strong man, but I have a good balance with like family life, yeah. business, competing, trying. Well, now you've got into it. So yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. But it's sort of like I have that sort of good balance now. And it's, it's hard when you're like in the thick of him. And what, what did I, I want to ask? Because he's going to jump in and say so, but I want to ask what did having a child for you do? Because I, I'm at that age where it's kind of like six months ago, didn't want no children, having a really good life, pushing the career. Six months later, I'd love to have children now to find something to love. James, is, we've kind of had this conversation before. I don't know what your thoughts are now. Did you always have kids? I didn't want kids. Oh. I didn't want kids at all. So it's like us. Um, I was so, <laughs> so focused on what I was doing. Yeah. And like, you know, I mean, I'd be, I'll see there and with me, I was extremely selfish. Um, it was all about what I wanted, my goals, and everyone around me had to fit in with that. Right. And, and I knew that having a child wouldn't fit in with that lifestyle. I was on the road all the time. That is, yeah, and it was, I mean, and it was sort of, I mean, I, it's, it's quite funny because I, I get on really well with my ex, with my boy's mum. Now we, we're fantastic. We have a great relationship between the two of us. You know, we yeah. both co-parent very well. We do like birthday parties together. You know, my family, hers, okay. her new husband. So everything's great. And um, it's sort of, I used to, I think when we first split up, I used to blame her for a lot of things. Yeah. Of, of us splitting up. Yeah. And now I sort of look back at it and go, actually, like, like I must have been a nightmare to live with. Because I didn't care about anyone or anything around me. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and, and uh, you know, I, I can be honest about it now. It's sort of an, having time to reflect on it. You know, if it's, if she wanted to do something that didn't fit in with like exactly what I wanted to do, I just wouldn't do it. Yeah. And what did having a child do for did change the everything. Change everything. Yeah, because all of a sudden it's like it's the world isn't about me anymore. Yeah. It's about him. And now I'm trying to be better and do things and earn more money. And, you know, all of my goals are based around giving him a better life rather than giving me a better life. So it's probably made me a better person to move forward. Which actually improved your life. Yeah. Yeah. Your life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's very hard when you're sort of in the thick of it to not be, you know, especially... Because you, when you get a little bit of fame with it and stuff like that as well, it's hard to not think that the world revolves around you. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it's so, I think it's like, it, I, I feel the same. And I feel, right, either I'm just going to carry on working, I just keep pushing these goals and, and it's fine. And I might, you know, be 50 but with no child, no no children or no mm. no wife or anything. And it's it's really interesting. Or you go, well, wait there, let's take a, let's take a pit stop. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, build something again that then helps you. Yeah, I, know, I, th I think you can do. I mean, I think that definitely, um, I feel like I'm a much better person now than I was right. before he came along. Um, you know, just as a rounded individual, yeah. you know, I wouldn't say that, you know, sometimes if you're very business driven and money driven and goal focused, you know, a child can take away from that a little bit, but you can still get pretty close to it, but you also have so much more as well. Yeah. So I think he's. You've got, to, yeah, exactly what you said earlier. You've got to time it right because if you do it too early, it's kind of like you, I think you'll spend your whole life, especially if you've got so, so many goals that you want to achieve. You have a child too early and you're then going to feel like, you know, I've missed out on all these opportunities. Yeah. Right. So go, just back into your career, mate. So I think we're at 2014 now, right? Right. So right. done nine years and you were sort of like, if I'm getting the nine years right, you were in the top um, yeah. 10 nine years consecutive right yep yeah yeah so at the time the nine years i did consecutively making top 10 was a record it was the most amount of consecutive finals anyone had ever made right and it was equal to the most number of top 10 finishes so i mean although i never won world's strongest man it kind of um you know showed my consistency i was just waste class how many people actually apply or go through that then? i mean there's just you know 
I mean, in in so in a year um, to get to world strongest man, it's the top thirty guys. Um, and you go for the qualifying stages. So there's five groups of six guys, and the top two from each group will go through to the top ten. But obviously, of that thirty, they've all had to qualify to be there as well. So you have the Giants' life throughout the year, which are the qualifying tour for world strongest man. The top three from each of those shows qualifies for world strongest man. It's comes through quite quite and a bit. You get yeah to get to the Giants' live. You then either got to go down the route of official strong man, which is like a qualifying route, or be doing well in things like UK strongest man stuff like that. You might get invite off the back of that. So there's this whole process of like how many how yeah, many tall people. Like, I mean, it's crazy. Either even like yeah. right down to novice level. Yeah. Um, I mean, the guys even compete at novice level. Uh, you know, they're still very strong compared to the average man. And I mean, there's thousands of them, literally. Like, right. we, if we put on a, like me and mine, run a lot of competitions together, or I have done in the past, we put on a novice competition, we might get 50, 60 guys turn up for it. Right. And they're all like way above average levels of strength. Yeah. But it's just in strong, man, you, when you're in it, you get this warped idea of what's strong and what's not. Yeah. It's like, so you start looking at guys deadlifting 220 kilos and you don't even bat an eye and just, yeah. like, oh, just sort of carry on. And then, in real, real terms, yeah, 220 yeah, deadlift is massive. Yeah, yeah. It's massive. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 so, it's, so it's bad. You know when you did 260 when you went, yeah. what would you press, bench press when you... So my, my first ever bench press session, I did 110. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a lot. It's yeah. the first time, yeah. So, you know, you know, like I said, I mean, although, but with, with my training, although I hadn't actually lifted weights, I've trained a lot for judo and yeah. rugby. So I, I had done strength same training of sorts, just not lifting weights. Right. So I think, I think, you know, there's a, a lot of studies in it with like gymnastics and stuff like that for kids. Kids that start doing gym, gymnastics at a young age, if they continue doing other sports, have a very like high trajectory of ability to get stronger yeah. and more athletic and everything else. Yeah. And I think for me, the judo really helped that because I was very flexible. Obviously, I'm sort of doing a lot of grappling and stuff. So my strength yeah. levels were extremely high without actually doing any strength training. Yeah. Do you think you're lowest trained? Always, I will never ever quit. Yeah. It's it's like it's seven, seven five. Years. Yeah, we we talked about it earlier. It's like when I stop, that's when everything's going to fall apart. Yeah. I know, I know that for a fact. Well, going back to when I sort of had that break when I was trying for my little and I didn't train, so I'd never had any problems with my back in my whole career. Like most people would expect you to have a lot of back problems. I've never had any problems whatsoever. I then stopped and I started getting horrendous sciatica. Right. So I'd be walking along and all of a sudden my, my left leg would go completely numb and limp. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'd have to like roll around on the floor stretching for five minutes just to ease it off enough. Because I, I couldn't feel my foot or my leg would go like limp. And it was all just from sciatica. And that was because I stopped training. Right. So like I was like, this is like a glimpse into my future. Yeah. I don't, if I if I stop training, this is what's going to happen. But you were, what, 34 then? That was young. Yeah. yeah. That's a lovely message from my, um, from my brother. I've just been having a go and he's got a slip disc in his back. And I just said to him, you don't move. No. He's just trying to, we're, in, we're immortal like a few months ago and I, I never have get injuries, you know, and I was doing, I was not nothing heavy. I was doing the, uh, the fr um, squats yeah. and I honestly had a bit of a hangover. Yeah. And I, 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 it was really early in the morning. I was like, I should do it. And as I pushed up, my back just ping it out and I couldn't walk. Literally yeah. couldn't walk. Like, so he was taking a piss out of me because I was recording. I, I, he, was, he was like, he was saying to me, you're so nice. You offered me to take me there. I was just taking him there, recording them. Yeah, I'm just like all the hospital was there at all. Yeah, so so sorry, you said you did that when you were what 34. Yeah, did it come back? Yeah. As soon as I started training again, it went. It's it just things you stop. It's, yeah. it's, it just everything yeah. stops. Everything falls to part. Yeah. Part, yeah. Because the thing is, as well, like your muscles are like holding you together. Yeah, like everything's staying where it should be. Yeah. All of a sudden, you start getting some muscle wastage. All the damage you've done is going to become very evident. So you start. How long did you stop for? And when did you start? I a year and a half, right. pretty much, and. um yeah, and then, then I started again, and strength came back really quick. That's one thing I, I have been very lucky with. Whenever I've stopped training heavy, as soon as I've gone, right, I'm going to get strong again, it, it comes back so far. I'm stag, yeah. Getting beyond where I used to be, that's hard. Yeah. But getting that strength back to a reasonable level is so yeah. easy, like the whole muscle memory thing. Yeah. yeah and, and I think that I'll probably adapt the way I train as I sort of get older. I'll probably drop the weights down, do more reps, stretch a bit more, more like I do with the bodybuilding, really. Right. Um, the bodybuilding training is so much better on my body than the strongman training. Right. So like, when, when I'm training for strongman, it's all like my elbows start to hurt, my knees hurt, my shoulders hurt. Yeah. 
when I'm doing the bodybuilding, nothing hurts apart from the like achy muscles. Yeah, I'm, so I'm not getting like actual joint pain. So, are you, are you eating more with the strong man? Loads more. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm probably at the moment sitting up around between eight and nine thousand calories a day, which with a bodybuilder, no, when I'm like really close to getting on stage, I get as low as like two and a half thousand. I have heard from a little birdie that you can you can you can put it away. I can eat quite a lot. Um, yeah, I've heard. <laughs> Yeah. On a hood, I've heard. I mean, we know that Eddie can he- eat a lot, yeah. and apparently you're 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 a different you're a different animal. I mean, yeah, I I um, what's have you got like a you must have a crazy story where someone's even if it seems normal to you what you're eating. I I don't even I don't, where someone's gone. How I just don't stop eating. Like when when I when I'm I mean it's when when you're around the other strong men, which this has happened quite a few times, and we're all eating together. When you the other strong men are saying to you, "Oh my God, you eat so much," you you know it's bad. Yeah. Give me, give us an idea. What's a, what's a one sin you go to? Like, I mean, but the dude the other day, I can't even remember what I had. I had a massive throw up, like huge one with like three sausages, hash browns, chips, eggs, bacon, beans, and then I finished all that. I mean, it was enormous, like one of these sort of almost challenge type ones. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I sat there, and like ten minutes later, I ordered two sausage baguettes as well because I was still hungry. And then we had to go down, drove down to. Um, have a meeting somewhere and he's literally like 10 minutes away and then I'm like I'll have a jacket potato with beans and then I was still hungry and then I had to stop and get a couple of sandwiches go on my way to the gym and he's like oh, so I don't <laughs> at, at the moment I don't if you, you said to me how many times a day do you eat like when I'm bodybuilding I'm very much like I eat seven times a day it's very regimented when I'm doing strongman it's like how many times do I eat a day well I don't ever really stop right um it's I just graze all day so it's, it's never like one huge meal normally I just don't really stop eating all day. It's like I'm constantly just having something. But yeah, it's um. I mean, like I've done a few eating challenges and stuff like that, and I've never failed. So, you've yeah, you've always won the eating. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> but if there's actually a place near me that does one, and I, I um, they had an ice cream dessert as a challenge. It was like this huge bowl like of ice cream, and it had all like curly whirlies and flakes and all sorts in it. And um, I'd already had like a double burger with chips barbecue sauce, onion rings, you know, some macaroni and cheese. So I'd already had all that. And then I was like, oh, I'll, do the, I'll do the ice cream challenge as well. And the waitress was like, are you sure? We well, had a lot of food. I'm like, it'll be fine. And I had to eat in 15 minutes. Well, it was fine. Like, I ate it all no problem. I mean, I was a little bit unwell afterwards. But the worst bit about it was the curly whirlies because where they'd shoved them in the ice cream, they were like rock hard. Right. So I'm like biting into them and I had like cuts all on the inside of my mouth as well because towards the end I'm like desperately trying to get it finished in the time frame. And yeah, all the curly whirlies where they'd gone rock hard and like sliced all the inside of my mouth. I was like, yeah, I won't be doing that again. <laughs> Man, we love food. Food's everything for us. It's like anything has never let me down. I just, it's just, yeah, don't really, don't really drink that much. Don't do drugs. Food is just a, just another, it's just, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sort of very much like that now, like a night out for me. When I was younger, I used to drink a lot. and um, But now I'd quite happily just go for some nice food. Now I'm all about the eating. So, so what happened? So you, when you started again, it was what, 2000 and... It was 2016 Worlds, I did. Stopped 2000, we then started 2016. Yeah, so 2015, I actually worked on World's Strongest Man on the presenting team. Right. Um, so I was still there, even though I wasn't competing in Malaysia. That was when I was like 200 and odd kilos. So I'm like standing there presenting in this linen trousers and a like nylon polo shirt, which they gave me to wear. And I'm like so fat at the time. I mean, enormous. It's like 40 degrees, 98% humidity. And I'm just like pouring with sweat the whole time. I mean, there's some terrible photos of me out there when I'm wearing it. It's like I was sweating so bad. My trousers were going (laughs) see-through and sores. It was awful. I think I drunk like on the first day I drunk twenty bottles of water, like uh, the five hundred milliliter wass, and I literally didn't pee once all day because I was just sweating so much. And when I eventually did go, it was like it almost looked like coke. It was like brown, just just where I'd yeah, just where I'd been sweating so bad. But yeah, I got back from there. I was like, oh, I need to... actually, my 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 ex missus was was with me, and she was like quite heavily pregnant at the time. And it was kind of like, which one of us is suffering more? It's like, but mine's through choice and uh, sort of isn't. But, but yeah, I sort of came back and um, then 2016 went back to World's Strongest Man um, and started competing again. And um, I, in that period, I had dropped quite a lot of weight. Um, so I dropped a bit going into 2016 Worlds. 
And by the then that was in Botswana. By the time I went to 2017 Worlds, I'd had a podium at Europe again. So I was like, sort of getting myself back in a good position in terms of like my level of competing. But I dropped by that point like 40 kilos. So I was down to like 160 kilos of nerves. Um, weight yeah and that was sort of like the start of the journey from sort of 2016 to 2017 i came down a lot in weight and um because of my sort of thought process change my son had come along and i was like i need to start looking at what i'm doing and how i'm living my life my friend had died so this was when i went back and was like okay you know i've got the love for it back i want to be back competing but i'm not going to do it like that anymore and if this means that I can't win and I can't make the final, then that's fine. I just want to be as competitive as I can yeah. be, but be as healthy as I can be doing that. Mm. And um, so then he was trying to get that balance of like having enough size and weight to be able to compete, but not too much to the point where it was having detrimental effects on my health. Yeah. So going back to 2014, my, my medical done for World's Strongest Man. And although... It wasn't like bad enough for them to not let me compete. There was a lot of warning signs there. Right. Oh, right. So, and and my friend had died of a heart attack. Was that from Strongman? Yeah. Right. And um, and I had my medical done for Worlds, and I had this thing called left axis deviation, where basically the left side of my heart was so enlarged that all the, more of the sort of electric signals were going to the left side of my heart. So almost like the right side starts shutting down a little. Was that from training and food? Yeah, just just from being as big as I was, right. the stress I was putting my heart under, right, and everything else. It was just, um, you know, it was just like I need to address this. Yeah. By the time I went back to world's strongest man and was competing again, everything was fine. So it was just the decisions I made. Yes, weren't perhaps the best for my competitive ability. But from a health point of view, it was so much better. Yeah, and when you're, you know, if you're, if you're, friend, I'm assuming it was a close friend, your close friend, you know, passes away from something, but you're essentially doing yourself. Doing the same, yeah. It kind of makes you open your eyes up. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. you start wearing a seatbelt in the car, or you, you know, yeah. a friend of mine passed away when drinking overdose weight. We are whereas in my twenties, and it just, it just made me rethink about how much drink and all that kind of stuff. Exactly that. I mean, and he was younger than me as well. So you do start questioning your own mortality. And you're like, he's younger than me doing the same thing as I'm doing. Most of the same things as I'm doing. Yeah. And this has happened to him. So, you know, and, and now I'm starting to get these warning signs as well. I could be the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Eddie was saying, like, if he was, he was going to die trying doing that thing, yeah. nosebleed, eyes, ears, will believe in everything. I mean, we, we all sort of talked about it. I've, I've known Eddie years. I love Eddie to bits. Like, he's great guy and um probably one of the most determined people i've ever met in my life i like sort of just sort of listening to him speak sometimes if you can get him away from the bravado and the joking and all that and actually listen to him speak i do quite enjoy it but he um it was it was nice when he did win world's strongest man not just because we all wanted him to win because it's like he always said that once he won that was it and it was kind of almost like a did it he's done it and now he can step away and be healthy and everything else. And he has done. You know, he came down a lot in weight straight away. He's done his boxing match and he's got himself fit for that. I said that too. I said he looks really healthy. Yeah. yeah. And and he's, I mean, I remember Eddie when he did the 500 kilo deadlift and um, I saw him, I, see, I was I was there competing as well and I was sitting opposite him at the restaurant before, but I think it was the day before or the morning of, and he was just pouring with sweat and he you know, had a fan with him everywhere he went and, it was just, I mean, absolutely enormous. And you sort of think to yourself, you you are like pushing everything. <laughs> so, Wait, you're red, red line in your body completely. Yeah. And and when he won, it was almost, almost, you know, it was almost like he could then do what I did and go. If he wanted to carry on, he could have done. But he's, you know, he can sort of either walk away with his head held high as world's strongest man winner, or if he wants to carry on doing it for fun, he can sort of just lay his foot off the gas a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he walked away, which was great. And obviously, you know, no one can ever take that title away from him. I think like this, this is the thing I think almost that titles are more important than world records. Because like once, what is it they say? Once the president, always the president. It's kind of like he's one world's strongest man. He will always, always world's strongest man. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Whereas a record will get broken. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm. I, I only have one, I, I have one final question. I suppose it's just a, uh, a, a, a still on it like what 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 else are you involved in what are you what are you doing on a, on a, I, I i imagine you're not just focused on strong when you see the type of guy that's got a few other things going on yeah i mean businesses and ideas and and 
feeding that into what you you have you know what you want to achieve or future what's so so i mean the main the main focus at the moment is um the coaching business and a lot of that is driven towards people that were much like myself that you know were in their mid 30s kind of let you know been fit and healthy in the past but let themselves go you know ex-rugby players ex-powerlifters a lot of my clients are in that sort of mold um that were very similar to like i was they perhaps had kids and like they're looking at it going you know i want to be around a long time for my my children so the main focus at the moment from a business point of view is that Uh, online coaching coaching. do do some in-person coaching and um, seminars and things like that and obviously then i I do the work on the strongman competitions i worked on world's strongest man last year doing the live show um like the roundup show every day Mm -hmm. and stuff like that I've got my modelling on the side. I model for a big man's clothing company, um, which is great. Uh, like yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, 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 it's good. Yeah, <laughs> but that, I mean, I enjoy doing that. I'm still involved with a few of the companies that I work with as sponsors. Right. And when um, I was competing, I like do a lot more with them in terms of like from a work point of view. And then um, me and mine have actually got a couple of little things in the pipeline, which we're working on at the moment, which, uh, yeah. Which, yeah, it's mine. Yeah. Right. Yeah, which um, yeah, which <laughs> yeah. goodbye, man. The glue, the glue. Yeah, one of one of them I'm really excited about. Yeah. I think he's more excited about the other one. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of them I'm really excited about, which I think could be very beneficial for people that want to eat healthy and live a healthy life. Can you say what it is, or is it? Um, I'd rather not at the minute. Um, but I I feel like it's something that that could be very very beneficial. And, yeah. Um, it certainly would be for me. But yeah, like I said, the, the coaching is the main focus and trying to help people make the changes that I did. And um, it doesn't mean that you've got to completely have a massive upheaval of your whole life and change everything. It's just a case of trying to manage your lifestyle and but still enjoy a lot. It's, it's, it's given that advice as well. To yeah, I mean... You've gone through, have the child, you've yeah. the loom for the, for the strong man, you've come down for... The, this is it. I've, I've been in their shoes. Yeah. I, I know exactly what it's like. And, um, and uh, it's nice... Yes, okay, it's a business, and I think like with all businesses, it's you know there is the element of making money, but also it's it's being able to give back a bit as well and actually help people with what I've been through, and um, it's nice to be able to do that. It's a good feeling. You get one of those messages come through, and you know every now and then you'll get someone who's done really well. And they're like, "You've literally changed my life," and that to me is worth more than any trophy I've got on my wall. Yeah, one person, two hours yeah. in the mafia. Yeah. Exactly. Oh man, that's amazing. It's, do you know what's great as well? Like, so I remember hearing your name all the time when I was growing up. Like, always hear your name and like seeing it. It wasn't just a strong man. It was just like you were like in Britain, you were like a household name. Yeah, you yeah. a strong man. And to see you coming back, because I mean, a bit, I'm like I said, same age as you. I feel young, man. Yeah. So I know some people are oh, 35, this football, whatever. So I love seeing you coming back, looking as fucking good as you do, and coming back, and whether it's doing the bodybuilding or the strong man and lifting almost what the strongest man in the world lifts. It, I think it made like if I'm gonna say anything. Now, it makes me not scared to get old because yeah. I think when I'm looking at 60, 70, 80, the slice alone, I think you're going to be one of those guys, you know, in so insane shape at 80, and it's just good to see, man. You yeah, and be on the tank tonight, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I hope so. I mean, I, I, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm just every day I'm fighting age. Yeah, and, and that will never change. Yeah, yeah. And, mate, I want to say as well, like, I didn't really know what to expect. But I've actually taken a lot from talking to you. Oh, thanks. Like uh, a, a lot of nice things I've taken, and I won't, <laughs> I won't forget. Which would yeah, yeah. That was brilliant. Well, and you f- and do you f- well, one last question? Do you feel great? That's that's, that's something. Yeah, you know, we just touched on some people we've seen and then passed away. Yeah. Do you feel great? Yeah. I feel I mean, generally, like, I mean, because you're getting up, you're training every yeah, day. Like, I, I, some I, people say, "Well, I look great, but this is aching all that." Yeah. I mean, I, I feel a, a little bit at the moment where I've put on the weight for the strongman competition. I'm not enjoying that, but. I feel great in terms of compared to how I did at my biggest right. and I probably feel a lot better than most 43 year old guys do. And also on top of that, I'm just totally comfortable in who I am, yeah. you know, and, and, and that is the, the real key to feeling good. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's here. Yeah. Stress. How you might be within yourself. Yeah. And if, if you're happy in who you are as a person, whether that be physically or mentally or anything. So if you're happy with the person you are, then you're winning in life. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. It was a really nice conversation. Yeah. It's a finish up, man. Yeah. Terry's been an absolute. Oh, thanks very much. Thank you. Very much. Oh, thank you. I enjoyed it. It was good.
um, he arm wrestled Eddie when he was on. <laughs> oh, yeah. So no, I, I, I want to see what your left is like. I can't do my left. It's Stephen Brown. He wants. Do your right, Dennis. Right. Do your right. Dennis, right. Do you look, I can do right. Well, let's see. They'll, they'll, they'll destroy it all. Come on. I've moved the glass out of the way. I'm going. <laughs> you ain't got a chance. <laughs> <laughs>